from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's Flash Friday. Tom Likas, you rat bastard! <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's the final Flash Friday of 2008. The men have their headlights on. The ladies are showing us their cans. So, uh... As we go to the Labor Day weekend, uh, most people consider this the official end of summer. And so I told you I'd be here, and I have been here every Flash Friday this summer. Haven't missed a one. Been here live every Friday. So uh, let's see those cans, girls. We flash you, you flash us. Let us know if you've seen a nice pair of cans. Call us here at one 800 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be, be anything we talked about this week. It can be about Barack Obama's speech. Not many comments about his speech. A lot more comments about John McCain's vice presidential running mate. Mostly negative. Including some McCain supporters. Wow. We can talk about that or anything else that's on your mind here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wes, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy, how you doing, man? Doing okay, Wes. All right. Well, hey, uh, I got two things for you real quick. I won't take too much of your time. I had to endure these knuckleheads calling in the other day talking about how they don't use condoms when they go in the rain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, they were talking about, oh, oh, and I hear this a lot on your show. Oh, I want to take birth control every single day. And I'm sitting there going, dude, all she has to do is take some Cipro or any other antibiotic, and it makes it completely 100% ineffective. By the way, by the way, you're absolutely right, and most women don't even know that, which is another yeah, one of the ways, you know, second kid. That, I mean, that, that's one of the ways that women become pregnant, and they say, well, I was on the pill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you took antibiotics for anything... Uh, it completely cancels out the pill. You're right. Uh, the the antibiotic will render the pill useless. Yeah, so you got to tell those guys, don't go full retard, go in with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wes. So, and, then, and then the second thing is Sarah, Sarah Palin, the, the girl that's... Wait, 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 wait. You can't whisper the F word. Come on. You're yeah! out! Zero tolerance policy. We can still hear you. He thought he could whisper the F word to somebody sitting next to him, and that we wouldn't count that as a curse word. Well, the FCC will. So. Nice guy, Sarah Palin. We'll never hear what your opinion was about her. What are you going to do? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Cherie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Dad. I'm doing okay, dear. How are you? I'm good. I wanted to call and say thank you. What have I done? Um, well, all the advice that you give the guys, um, I use, and it works really well. So are you getting more ass than a toilet seat, Cherie? Uh, than some. Really? Well, I like the fact that most guys think women want them to buy them drinks, 
Well, if I see a hot guy and I want to go back to his place, I'll buy him a drink and surprise him. Is that so? Uh, and, and are you hot? Um, well, I think I have great sex appeal. I, I think I'll take I'm that. Hot. I'll take that as a no. Oh, okay. I mean, I understand you. I'm not trying to diss you. What I'm trying to say is uh, hot chicks don't buy drinks for guys. They just don't do it. So the minute you told me you, you buy drinks for guys, I know something's afoot. Okay. Well, I'm 40. Come on. Yeah? How tall are you? 5'5". Five, five. How, how much do you weigh, darling? 146. There we go. Of course you're buying drinks. <laughs> probably buying them a Cinnabon while you're at it. <laughs> no, no, come on, no. I, I have fun, though, but I listen to your advice. I know what guys want and what they're looking for. Obviously, it's not me, but if I get an older guy who can't get a 23-year-old, you know, hey, I got a chance. Right. <laughs> we're hungry, we're horny, we're thirsty. Get out of our house. That's the basics. Hey, that's okay with me as long as that's what I want. Really? She's a piggy piggy. Are you a? Uh... Oh, she didn't. She didn't hear that. No, I didn't. Am I? Am I what? No, no. Then I was gonna. What I was gonna ask you was, uh, are you a screamer or a moaner? Um, depends on the guy. She's a piggy piggy. Oh, uh, that's not nice. I didn't say anything. <laughs> She's a no, piggy piggy. Not... That's not nice. I, I was here agree. calling for all the advice you gave me, but that was that was um, that wasn't very nice. So you have a good day. All right, thank you. She's upset at that caller. Said that. I didn't say that. But let's face it: if you're buying guys drinks at bars, you're either a a prostitute or b. A piggy piggy. Well, yes, dear, I'll have a dirty martini. Thank you for asking. Two olives, please. That's who's buying guys drinks at bars. Hot chicks don't sit around bars waiting to ask guys if they want a drink. They just don't. That's right. Why, look at that. I think that lady wants to buy me a drink. Yes. You waddle on here, dear. Come on over. Sit down and get the extender for your seatbelt. <laughs> oh, that's rude. That's rude. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Randolph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Randolph. Are all the, the Republicans on crystal meth? you got to wonder, of all the people to choose for vice president, are you kidding me? Listen, I lived in Alaska for 12 years. I've lived throughout the state. I just recently called into... Uh, uh, of a Republican uh, or conservative radio station here in Reno, Nevada, and gave them some talking points to why I think this was just a really bad decision for them, and there is just the gift that keeps on giving for the Democrats. Um, I just recently did a little tenure in a little village to where we were paying over nine dollars a gallon for for get for for heating fuel, paying over eight dollars just for regular gas. Milk is uh, fifteen dollars a gallon. Um, she, Sarah was the mayor of a city called Wasilla where they have big time meth labs and big time pot growing operation and all of this was on her watch. And of course she has some of the redneck issues the way she's trying to get her, her, uh, sister's, uh, uh, brother-in-law or, or somebody fired because, uh, her sister was about to get divorced from him. And these people are just, are you there? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm listening with rapt attention. Yeah, but uh, I just don't see why these people are are supporting 
supporting her with little information about her, and I think it's just going to blow up in our face, and uh, that's all I have to say. Keep up the great work. Randolph, thank you for that. Appreciate the call. Well, yeah, this is going to get interesting before it's all over. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, James. Hello. Okay, Mike, I... I'd heard your comments uh, earlier about Phil Collins and Paul McCartney and how much money they have to pay to their ex-wives. And it really, I was driving on the freeway, and it just, it, it, it pissed me off. It pissed me off something fierce. And I was listening, I don't know if it was about two days ago, I was listening to the radio in the morning, and I heard that Paul McCartney is uh, set to get married again to... Uh, to his girlfriend. Oh my God! Yeah, wow. he's thinking about getting married to to his girlfriend, and I'm I'm thinking fifty million dollars. Okay, he had to pay, and then Phil Collins got divorced after him. He had to pay fifty million. Wouldn't you see that it's not working, and you should try something else? Hey, uh, by the way, you're Paul F. and McCartney. Okay, <laughs> if a woman says. Oh, you come on! I, why, why won't you ask me to marry you? You say, "Look, I was a beetle." All right, <laughs> it, it, it's my way or the highway, sweetheart. Exactly. I mean, what? Why, why is Paul McCartney so pussy whipped? That's what I want to know. I have no idea, and I don't understand how. I, I just, I can't, I can't fathom it. Fifty million dollars, and then he sees his. He's got to be friends with Phil Collins, or you have to know him. He's in the music business. I mean, he has to pay $50 million. Come on. Do something else. Paul, please. At, least, Paul at, least, Phil, at least Phil Collins was married, I think, for nine years. How long was okay. Paul McCartney married? I have no idea. How long was he married? Was it three years, four years? Yeah. Not a long time. Uh, I, I By the way, up, the new, the new girlfriend. I actually, I blew up at work, and uh, and I was just... It just uh, the it new was, girlfriend. Uh, it, it, uh, does she have all four limbs? I <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. At this point, I mean, he needs his ex wife's name. Limbs. His ex wife's name was what? Stumpy, right? Yeah, Stumpy. Yeah, Peg. Yeah. Peg. Yeah. Peg leg. Yeah, I Eileen. in a pirate movie. I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> Jeez. Um, his ex wife's hey. name was Eileen. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Tom, thank you so much for taking my call. Hey, can you uh, can you take me out tribal style with uh, Snoop Dogg at the end? I certainly can. Biatch. Tom Likes. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likes. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I just got flies going on the 110 South, headed towards San Pedro, bro. Really? Tell me what you saw. It was a white chick, and she was on a old, like, Tercel. It was kind of green. She looked a little white trashy, but I don't give a hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, bro. Hey, man, I wouldn't be able to get this if I was listening to any other station, man. Let me tell you. Man. That's exactly right. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Like a show. Ask for it by name. 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's our telephone number. Wide open telephone. The final Flash Friday of the season. Well, this is Jennifer on the Tom Like show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Is every comment you make going to be preceded by a 10-second pause? I just want to plan accordingly. I just, I'm just i on my cell phone, and I couldn't tell if I was on with you. But what I wanted to ask was I turned on when you were telling that woman playing the piggy piggy, and I was wondering, do you consider She's yourself a piggy piggy? Do you consider yourself a piggy piggy? Not in the least. What is that? I've seen your picture on the website, and mm, I don't think you're... Really? Is that so? You're not the poster boy for health. Well, I'm very healthy, darling. 
Well, I think that you look to me like you're borderline obese. <laughs> well, that's fine with me. I, you know what? What do I care? I've got money, power, fame, and chicks. And does that work for women, too? What if women have no power and guys? No, guys don't care about that. They're still considered piggy piggies? Guys don't care if women have power. Believe me, Hillary Clinton would not be popular with the guys. I, what era are you living in? I really think that nowadays women are even more educated than men. Women are. Uh, but, 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 but men don't care how educated you are. We care about how good you look. But educated then comes to go after going to college. By the way, the more educated most women are, the worse they look. I just know that all this advice you're giving these young guys, I mean, it's not going to, it works for you if you're It works for them, too. And by the way, they've been calling in reporting their success. Uh, but I think it works for you being fat and ugly because you've got money and power. And you well, can... as I say, uh, the guys have been calling in and reporting they're getting more ass than a toilet seat. But anybody says that, they're not going to call up and say... Well, yes, every, and by the way, who, how do we know you're not a big, fat, ugly pig? You probably are. I could be. <laughs> but I'm not. Probably are. Oh, but, I mean, we've got your picture to prove it that you're Yeah, and we've got you calling in anonymously, so chances are that you are a big, fat, ugly pig. I mean, come on, do you consider yourself intelligent? I... Yeah, I know I'm intelligent. Oh, there you go. So you've proven my point. Most intelligent women are hideous. And I think attractive. I'm how many guys? How many guys want to bone Hillary Clinton? She may be intelligent, but uh, how many guys want to nail her? Well, I don't look like Hillary Clinton. Guys don't care how intelligent or how successful you are. What we care is what you look like naked. I think women care about what you look like naked. Uh, guess what? If you have a man has money, power, and fame, they don't. Ma'am, they're not going to spend any of that money, power, or fame. By on the you. time they figure that out, you move on to the next victim. I think your word has spread. I think women are a little smarter than you give them credit for. Well, all I know is I've had a number of victims over the years who would testify that I have ruined their lives. <laughs> they did things with me they're going to regret for the rest of their lives, and I'm proud of it. Oh, I just wanted to hear your double standard that you didn't consider. There is no double standard. It is the double standard that has existed for all time. Uh, women are hot. Men have money. That's the way it works. Water sinks its own level. So, do you weigh? Doesn't matter. matter? 10,000 pounds, okay? It does not matter. And then... Okay, I got your point. Thanks so much. I just thought I'd have that input. Before Thanks. you go, darling, and I know you think you were so clever, but I don't think anyone else thinks so. Brenda, what did you want to say to Jennifer? I just think that it's completely stupid what she's saying. If that's the case, society wouldn't be objectifying women the way that they do. I, I mean, come on. Why would women go get boob implants? Why would they do certain things like... Guys like what they do, and women are more than willing to do it so they can get a little bit of, you know, water cash. That's how it is. That's how it's always going to stay. Sorry. I must have a bad cell phone connection. Yeah, well, how convenient that you have a bad cell phone connection when a woman calls up to tell you you're wrong. How convenient. It's a phone <laughs> Have a nice day. I do enjoy your show. By the way, uh, De Dean believes you're completely faking it by pressing the mute button. He thinks I'm... Oh. Yes, he thinks you're faking it by pressing the mute button. That's right. Hey, Dean. Have a good day, buddy. Very convenient. Very convenient that suddenly the phone goes dead when a woman calls it to call you on your crap. I just... <laughs> it, 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 it. Okay. I, 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 okay, I have a nice day. Very good. Thank you for the call. Very nice. <laughs> I have this room. I, 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 you're, uh, 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 you, uh, 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 One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Another stupid, fugly broad calling in here trying to get my goat. 
One thing she'll never get is my money. Bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kathy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, Kathy. I can't, I called to make a comment about the Republican choice for vice president. But before I do that, I just have to comment on that last caller. You are absolutely right. First of all, you're not ugly and you're not that fat. And women don't care about that anyway. I'm attracted to a guy because of his power and his intelligence. And when I say power, it's not because of the money. I just like powerful men that have been, that are successful and have made it. And that's the way it has been all time, as you said. So now uh, it's vice- always been that way. It's never been any different. Right. And my, my 19 year old daughter, would loves uh, would love to go out with Anthony Hopkins, and she's hot. It's nothing to do with that. Women like men for a different reason than the way when, uh, men are attracted to women. It's just different, and that's the way it is. You can't change it. That's the way it is. But anyway, I have a comment about the vice presidential uh, choice. I, I can't believe what they've done. They've shot themselves in the foot. I mean, they they. They're crazy. I mean, with all of their Republican corporate backers and organization, what were they thinking? Did, did anybody think that if anything happens to McCain, who's 72 years old, she's going to be the president of the United States? I mean, that's scary. That's crazy. For that reason alone, if I, even if I was a Republican and, and agree with their whole platform, I would never vote for that pair because of the fact that he's 72 years old, and if he dies, that woman with no experience, with a year and a half experience as a governor, and before that a mayor of a little teeny town, would be the president of the United States. Oh, that's just crazy. Well, nope, you're uh, absolutely right. There's no doubt about it. Uh, by the way, um, we talked about this earlier, and giving it some thought, uh, and again, uh, getting rid of my total disdain for John McCain, you know who a smart choice would have been for him? Who? Somebody named Henry Paulson. Do you know who that is? I've heard the name. Could you? He's the United yeah. States Treasury Secretary, and he was previously the chairman of Goldman Sachs, one of the biggest brokerage firms on Wall Street. That would investment have been a fantastic bank. Choice. Uh, yeah, and because yeah, here you got the guy. He's already shot himself in the foot by saying the economy's not a strong suit. Here's somebody who is currently working in government has no baggage of being a politician, so you can't attack his legislative record, you can't at- attack his previous campaigns or his campaign financing. Or the guy's never run for anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got no negatives. He knows the economy. And Wall Street loves him. And if McCain didn't know the economy, he could say, yeah, but I got this guy. It would have been a very smart choice. This was one of the stupidest things he could have possibly done. And as somebody who hates McCain and does not want to see him elected, uh, it, it's like the best thing that could have possibly happened. Some chick with no experience. And they got the black guy, so we got the chick. No experience. Well, you know why they picked her. Because she had no experience and therefore very little to criticize. Well, that, but I, I think what they were going for is they thought that now that Hillary didn't win the isn't on the ticket, that they were going to woo away the women who were vote, going to vote for Hillary and, you know, pull them over to, to McCain. But Which is I'm, so I'm, stupid, and the reason it's stupid is because there isn't a Hillary Clinton supporter in this universe that would support an anti-abortionist or a gun nut, both exactly, of which I mean, this woman retarded. is. <laughs> this woman is both. Are there? I don't know the Republican Party, though. I'm a, I'm a staunch Democrat, but aren't there any strong Republican women that they could have picked if that was their philosophy, if that was their game plan? Isn't there someone else they could have picked that would have a woman in the Republican Party? First of all, I don't think they needed to pick a woman. I mean, that was their game plan, though. I'm really sure that that's what the game plan was, because I've heard different uh, market research saying that there are women who said that if they w- didn't, if Hillary didn't make it, they were going to vote for McCain. Well, currently, I don't know of any, uh, I mean, they went to the governor of Alaska. How many women uh, Republicans are in big political positions? Can you name one? That's what I'm saying. Maybe there aren't any, because I, I don't know. Huh? I thought maybe... Now, one time I, I, you had a, one time you had Elizabeth Dole, 
who is still alive, but how old is she? 75? She's older than yeah. McCain. Right. That would have been a nice ticket. They would have got the senior vote. Yeah, Nancy Reagan. I mean, who, who <laughs> <laughs> name, name, name a prominent Republican female. I can't. <laughs> really? Harriet Tubman? I mean, who? If she was still alive, that'd be a perfect pick, you know, black woman, <laughs> old. She'd be really old if she were alive today. So anyway, so I think they shot themselves in the foot. I don't know what's going on with their with their the the people that are advising him. I don't know how they made that choice. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm I telling you how they did it. They, 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 they're a bunch of boobs. They sat in the room. They said they got the black guy. We got to get a woman. And that's the only woman they could think of. But maybe you're right when you started saying, like, what other? maybe there aren't any other women in the Republican Party to choose from. They're busy but, ironing their husband's shirts. They have no time to run for office, the uh, women right. Republicans. But speaking of, of Obama, what did you think of the speeches? I thought they were fantastic. I thought Hillary just blew that away. I mean, it was a fantastic speech. Bill Clinton was fantastic. Well, the thing about Obama that was interesting, and again, I don't care what you think of him and his politics, because certainly uh, I wish he wouldn't take so much money from me when he gets elected. But we have had eight years of a, 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 a stuttering, stammering idiot as the president of the United States. How refreshing was it? And I've said this earlier on the program. How refreshing was it to see an intelligent, well-educated, articulate individual who has a chance of being president. You get goosebumps just thinking of going back in time to a time when an intelligent person sat behind the desk. Yes, I felt that way too. He, his speech was very well. It wasn't as dynamic. It didn't have a lot, but but it was so well presented and so intelligent. I just, I got goosebumps too. I mean, the rest of the world, I, look, I travel a lot. The rest of the world is laughing at us the last eight years. Are they laughing at us or they hate us? Yeah, I think this is going to be a huge turnaround for the country. I think Michelle Obama is wonderful. Uh, uh, she's not in your, I, I know you speak a lot about stereotypes and the majority of women are this or that, but, you know, Michelle Obama is beautiful. She's intelligent. Uh, she's Harvard graduate, law school graduate. Just she's a wonderful role model for for young. And the, her girls were just beautiful and well behaved on the stage. I mean, I just I got goosebumps too. It was wonderful to see them up there. What, what do you think of Michelle Obama? I got nothing negative to say about Michelle Obama. I I am one who doesn't think the wife of the candidate is that important. Uh, I look at the candidate uh, because you're not going to get the wife. You're going to get the candidate. The wife. Uh, is going to be sitting home, uh, you know, with the Secret Service, uh, t uh, twiddling her thumbs. That, that's what ends up happening. Uh, but uh, there's certainly nothing negative I can say. I, everything you say about her suit, she's beautiful, well-educated, articulate, every bit is match. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I mean, there's nothing negative I can say. I just, to me, the, the whole title of First Lady is demeaning to women because how do you become First Lady? You're not elected. You have sex with the President. Right. So uh, it's not really an accomplishment to become first lady. It's, you know, it's just kind of what happens. No, you're you're right. But I meant as a woman, I think she's a wonderful role model. And I think, um, you know, I think a lot of your show is based on a typical Los Angeles, Southern California woman. And, and, and rightly so. You know, I have a nephew and I don't want him to get entangled with the women that are going to use him and abuse him and cheat on him. But but. In a more on a more generic level or national level, that that's the kind of woman. If any of your listeners want to ever get married, that's the kind of woman they want. A uh, nice here, here's my point. Here's the point I want to make to you. Just like Barack Obama is refreshing because there's so few of him around, Michelle Obama's the same thing. But my boys don't meet Michelle Obama. Okay, my boys meet Queen Fatifa. <laughs> my boys meet. Yes, I said Fatifa, yes. Uh, my boys meet everybody who's large and in charge. My boys meet all the ones with big mouths, very little education. You know, that, that's what my boys meet. And right. uh, they don't meet Michelle Obama. I mean, hell, in my lifetime, I haven't met a lot of women like that. I'll tell you right now. In my lifetime, mostly I've had to choose between hot or intelligent. But you generally don't get both. Because hot chicks don't need to be intelligent. 
Well, they're out there, but as you well, said, they're far they're far and few between. I, you see, the, I, you see, you see that needle over there in the haystack. Go get it. I think they're there, but they're as you said. I think that they you have to try to find them, and and they are, and they're going to be on the university. So it's a really good, it's really good that you push your guys to go to school and not to a junior college, but to a university, because if they do want to get married, that's where they're going to find a, a person like that. They're certainly not going to find them at a bar, or and if that's and if they want the one night stand, you're absolutely right. Go to the bar, and what's that saying you say? You know, hit it and something. And it or, it. Pump it and dump it. Yeah, that one. Use it that's, and lose it. That's so true. Bang it and clang you're it. Go meet someone at a bar or on MySpace because those women are just you know they're gold diggers. They're 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 cheaters. They're not they're not they're not any good. If they ever do want to get married, go to school, go to university, have a good life, meet a nice woman who's gonna you know contribute to the income of the family. There's a successful uh, goal, but. Kathy, it's been just a little slice of heaven. Thank you for the call. Like it. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOWN. Like it. 1-800-5800-866. I got at least 10 women I can call right now who are between the 7 and the 10 who will come over here and do my every desire because of the things that Tom Likes has taught me. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likes Show. Final Flash Friday of the season. Don't forget, we want to put on our big taco truck showing of support, big taco truck festival. And we need your help. If you have a big, flat space, preferably in East L.A. or in uh, Los Angeles proper, a parking lot, a big, flat asphalt area, a place to park trucks or a schoolyard or something, where we can put a bunch of taco trucks in there and then bring a bunch of listers down. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, call us now. Now. At 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. We want to show our support for the little guy. The taco truck owners are now there getting pushed around. And we want to show our support for them. So uh, by all means, call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. And we have an opening on the line. We've been trying to get in. Now's the time to call Dean at 1-800-5800-866. If you can't get through on the phones, uh, uh, drop us a line here at Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And we will contact everybody who sends in a phone number. Send us your phone number and we'll do the rest. That simple. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Uh, Tom, first of all, I love your show, man. I'm a long-time listener, so this is going to sound crappy, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of your show. But, man, it bums me out when you talk about the amount of money you make. It really does. It just seems to me to well, come I've never told anybody how Well, I've never told anybody how much I make. No, not to the dollar amount. You just talked about how, you know, you're rich, powerful, and, you know, it just it comes across as, uh, as you know, classless. As sort well, of, it's, uh, but, it, but, it, but it's true. Well, that may be the case. But I think that uh, so I shouldn't you know, tell the truth. Should I pretend to be, you know, a ten dollar an hour employee over here? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can you go lie about that without, uh, you know, uh, declaring to the world how much you make on a regular basis. When someone calls me and tells me I'm a loser, I am compelled to respond. Well, and the thing is, though, I mean, you can. You what can should I say? Without, what should I uh, say? You know, You're uh, right. Going the route that you go. Well, the route that I go I'm, proves that I'm not a loser. First of all, if they're if they're dumb enough not to realize that, you know, I mean, most people who uh, call into the Tom Likas show realize that you're cornering the market on advertising, that for your demographic, you're kicking the hell out of every other DJ and every other talk show out there. I think most of the people have a pretty good idea of the fact that, uh, you know, you're a, a very, very successful uh, at what you do. And, you know, the... the the, there are a number of people who are delusional enough. Are call, I, there sorry, are a number of people who are delusional enough to, to believe that's not true. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just, I think it, it, it sort of debases you. It, it, you know, it makes you come across as, uh, as a guy with a, with a lack of class, and I don't think that's who you are. In fact, I've listened to you on, uh, other programs where you talk about, uh, 
you know, wines and other things, and you just come across as a, as a guy with a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge, wisdom, class. I have a lot of knowledge Please. and wisdom, but uh, when I'm on that show uh, talking about that topic, people are not calling and saying, you're a loser, you're a loser, you're a loser. So when someone calls <laughs> in and calls me a loser, I provide evidence of the truth, which is that I have money, power, and fame, and it's true. It is. I, I'm not, I'm, you know, in no way am I uh, knocking that. I just, uh, and, and I understand, what, you know, what you're saying, and, and you know, it, it makes sense. I understand that, you know, it's a, it's a response that, uh, that answers the question at hand. It just, I don't know. I mean, I don't I, generally uh, bring it up I on like my it. own. It, it's when someone uh, starts challenging me that I bring it up. If nobody challenged it, uh, I would have nothing to say about that. Yeah, there may be some truth to that. And I'm not trying to ruffle you, Tom, because I really do dig your show. In fact, I don't miss it. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm a pretty faithful listener. That's important. But, uh, you know, enough said. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, debate or argue with you. I love your All show, right. Tom. I've taken it under advisement, Brett, and I appreciate the call. All right, man. You have a good night. Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. Thank you. Chasen of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you, Chase. Hey, uh, I have a question for you. You know, cause, since it's Free Topic Friday, uh, I remember a long, long time ago, this guy called in. And he was talking about how he thought that the movie Knocked Up was going to be terrible because he thought it was going to go against a lot of, you know, the stuff that you talk about and teach. And he said that, you know, you were going to see it and see what it was it was like. Did you ever see it? And what was your opinion? I did, and the caller was exactly right. Really? Yes. The ending was pussified. Yeah, I that is, I could see that, but I mean, they never said they got married. But I don't know, I could see that. Tom, uh, yeah, the, the thing is, he didn't have to say they got married. The point is, he knuckled under. He stayed with her. That, that's true. And, like, I mean, it's true because, you know, like, she even said, you know, she was trying to, you know, stop him, you know, from doing the things he liked, you know. Like, he gave up, right. you know, hanging out with his friends, you know, and he gave up, you know, doing all that fun stuff, you know, that and he had fun doing. You and know, that, character said, you know, like, treat, that character, uh, that character, the chick he knocked up, treated him like a bitch. Yeah, well, that is kind of true, yeah. I mean, personally, I don't try to take stuff like that. Too seriously when I watch a movie, I try to watch it for the comedy. But you know that is true. Like you, you, you if you do look at stuff like that, you know it's kind of it is obvious that they're trying to like convey a certain message sometimes. No doubt about it. Uh, also, uh, can I just mention one more thing uh, pretty quickly, or uh, like, or do I have to go? Should I have to go soon? No, uh, one more thing quickly. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, personally, I totally agree with you on this whole thing about you know. Uh, the vice president, you know, like with John McCain, like I think that's a, a very, very stupid decision. And I think it could be very, very bad for our country if things go for the worse. Like if he dies and she gets to be president. I mean, no, Can I mean, you if imagine dies. if this broad becomes president? Wait, what? Can well, you I mean, imagine? I like him that much, but I mean, you know, like if he dies while he's in office and she's his vice president and she becomes president, I think that could be a very, very bad thing. That, well, that's what I'm talking about. Talk about somebody with no experience. Yeah, like what did what did he say? Like she was a, the the mayor of some town where there were like meth labs everywhere. That's what the caller said. Yes. Yeah, and like with the other thing with John McCain is, I mean, I'm not going to say he's a horrible person because I mean, you know, he did the worst stuff. But I don't agree with his politics at all. Like, I mean, you know, you have this example of you know George Bush not doing a good job with our country, and he's voted with him like 90 percent of the time. You know, and someone asked him about the economy, like I think it was John McCain, and he said, you know, he thinks it's it's going okay, and, and obviously it's not. You know, like it's getting worse and worse every day. And so I just think that he need, we need to see that he's too much like the previous president. I think you're right. And uh, by the way, I think uh, a lot of people already believe that. But over the weekend, we'll see what the polls say, Jason. I thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Vincent on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hey, man, do I have a story for you, man? Okay. Uh, well, first, let me, let me um, start off by saying, you know, I've, I, did, I made a mistake when I was about 14. I, I've been locked up. I, well, I was locked up. I just got out recently, maybe about uh, six months ago. And um, came home with my cousin, and, uh, you know, we're, we're over here drinking a couple 
drinking a couple beers and stuff, and, uh, you know, next thing you know, his neighbor comes over, and um, let's, to make a long story short, I know you don't have a lot of time, um, I banged the girl, I, I barebacked on her, and now she's pregnant. Good work, Ace. I know, I know, but you know, hey, you got you got to take into consideration. I, I was locked up for a while, you know. Kinda what does that horny. have to do? What does that have to do with anything? I mean, you know, I was, it, I was just horny, and you know, I. I was if with you the think head, if you apparently. think being if you think being in prison was tough, wait until you're the hostage of some broad who wants to take money out of your paycheck every month for the next twenty one years. Yeah, man. I I mean, well, well basically, you know. I called her and I told her, you know, you better get that damn abortion or I'm going to, you know, do something to you. And she's over here saying that I'm a bad person for even mentioning it. And she's not even going to take it into consideration. And, you know, I mean, what what, what exactly can you tell me on that? About you know, what? I'm trying to get her to get an abortion and she's really not having it. You know? Uh, well, she's not going to. You see, but, like, I mean... I don't know, man. What, you I think just, threatening her is going to do it? I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to threaten her to, uh, you know, maybe have a change of heart, but... Well, she, knows, like she knows you having been in the big house, she knows you're never going to act on that threat. Yeah. So, uh, well, what do you think? What, should I just, uh, should I just uh, come at her a different way, or what? Uh, again, you know... Because you have threatened her, the Hail Mary is out the window. I think pretty much you are just screwed. It's the Tom Likas Show.